Hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Yes, you read the title right. So, backstory I suppose. If you've been to, if you've been watching my videos here for a while, if you've been around for a bit or you like know me a little bit, um, you may know that I've said I will probably never do an unhaul. Yes, I still stand by that. <laughs> Except I'm doing an unhaul. Now, it is for a good reason. Well, multiple reasons, but mainly, <laughs> here's the thing. So, Yalk, <laughs> 2024. I want to go. I want to go really badly. Um, I don't think I can because I am broke. <laughs> I'm very, very broke, okay? So, what, what do I do to try to amend this then? Well, I, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, sell some things. So in this case, books. Um, <laughs> so I went through my TBR cart and uh, I picked up some books and it may be uh, a lot of books and I'm hurting a little bit, but also I'm, I'm in this era right now where I really wanna go to Yalk, okay? And these books have been on my shelf or my TBR card in this case. They've been here for a while and I've not picked them up yet and I, I'm not like inclined to do it so far. So I, my thought is that if I can get like a couple of pounds for, for each book, and maybe reach my goal, maybe I can go to Yalk. <laughs> I'm desperate, okay? I'm so desperate. Anyway, you're not here for me complaining about wanting to go to Yalk and not being able to. Uh, you are here to see what books I'm unhauling. So, without much further ado, let's get into the books. So, I have a couple of piles here and I'm gonna attempt to move them over there. But before that, let's talk about them. So the first one I have is The Hippopotamus by Stephen Fry. No idea what this book is about. Um, so I read Making History uh, by Stephen Fry a good long while back. It took me ages to go through. And uh, in the end, I probably didn't really like it. It's on my shelf somewhere, but yeah. So I'm not, I, I haven't been inclined to pick this up now. I love Stephen Fry, okay? I bloody love him. I've loved him all my life for various reasons. But making history didn't really work for me. So I'm like, will this one work? Saying this though, I did uh, read Mythos and I am kind of in the middle of reading, uh, what's it called, Heroes, which is uh, part of his Greek retelling, Greek mythology retelling. Um, and, it, and it's, awesome i'm loving it um yeah i'm loving everything about that but this i think i'm gonna have to say goodbye to uh another book that's been on my shelf for a very very long time probably um when did this come out let's see when it came out because um okay it came out in 2008 so not longer than that i was gonna say longer than that but apparently it came out in 2008 so it, it is uh, Just Henry by Michelle Megorian. Also, it's been on my shelf for a very long time. I don't know why I bought it in the first place because I'd never heard of the author. I've still never heard of the author, so I don't know. Um, I think it's... I, I don't know. Something about it screams it's like historical fiction-ish. And I'm not really into that kind of thing. Um, from the award-winning author of Goodnight Mr. Tom. Don't know what book that is either. Yeah. Um, it's a chunky chunky boy. Um, I mean the the font is quite normal sized, so it, it should be easy to read, but I I've, I've had it for such a long time and I'm not reached for it. the glare this book is given also is uh and then we have a classic book, which also don't know why I bought in the first place, but uh, yeah, so it's a Revolutionary Road by Richard Yates. No a bloody clue what this is about. I just know it's a classic and Yeah, that's about it <laughs> And it's kind of a book that's not making me want to read it for some reason I don't know if it had it's because it has that like 
classic literature stamp on it or if it's just I don't know I don't even know why I bought it in the first place. Well, I do know I bought it as part of a four for three kind of a deal. So I bought four books, but I only paid for three. So one of those was three. Uh, one of those was free, um, but I don't remember <laughs> the other books I bought with this book. So yeah, goodbye. Goodbye, Revolutionary Road. Why do I do that? I don't know. So this is a book that I've actually started reading and <laughs> I, I, I've read sex, sex, I've read six pages. Um, so yeah, bookmark's still there. Uh, it is The Fading by Christopher Ransom. I believe it's a um, mystery thriller kind of a deal. I mean, the six pages of it hasn't really given me anything. But also a book that's been on my shelf for a bit and... I don't know where I bought it. I know I bought it as part of a big bundle deal. So this book was like one pound. Um, so if I could get one pound for it, <laughs> I'm happy. Um, yeah, it's gonna go. It's just gonna go. I've had it, I don't know when I started it, but it's prior to 2023, so. Uh, next book, also one I have started. I have read eight pages. No, I've read seven pages. I'm about to start page. Uh, it is The Dark Path by Michelle Sachs. It's the same kind of deal. It was one of those one pound books in a big box. I, I don't know exactly if, uh, I don't know if it, the book was exactly one pound, but out of all the books in the box, uh, divided by the price of it, they all came around to like one pound each. So yeah. Also, mystery thriller. I mean, I like a mystery thriller, but it takes a while for me to want to read it. And obviously, started it, have not done anything more with it. So, uh, this book I have also started. I think that is the last one I have started out of the rest of them. Um, it is a book that I have been told I should chuck out the window because it's, it's that good. Um, so yeah, it's The Hundred Year Old Man Who Climbed Out of a Window and Disappeared by Jonas Jonasson. Also, been on the shelf for a bit, have started it. Um, yeah, maybe I'll watch the movie and I'll get the whole drift. But yeah, for, for me, this probably, it's, yeah, bye. And I think these next two are non-fiction. So this is Dear Reader, The Comfort and Joy of Books by Kathy Rensenbrink. Um, I, d I don't know who this person is. Reading has saved my life again and again and has held my hand through every difficult time. It's probably a very sweet book in a way. I, I think it's like this person's like journey through how books have saved her life. Um, I, d I don't know. I don't know who this person is. Um, so that doesn't help, but it is a, like a beautiful stunning cover and I mean I do like books I do like reading about books So I should theoretically just want to read this but so, for some reason I don't so <sighs> next one um, Yeah, it is how to be a woman by Caitlin Moran. I don't know much about Caitlin Moran I haven't really seen her out and about but I do know who she is. That's about as far as that goes. Uh, I do think this is a book you probably would want to read but I also think this book has come out in like five million different editions with like added on stuff and, and, and yeah so I don't know maybe in the future but for, for now I'm not really reaching for it. Also I do prefer my non-fiction to be hardback for some reason and this is a paperback so th there's that. Um, yeah maybe in the future. Okay, so next two are quick reads. So this is Wish You Were Dead by Peter James. I believe this is like a novella set after like book 11 or 13 or something like that. And oh, I, I don't feel like picking up all the other books. Yeah, it's a detective one. Um, so it's something murderish things, I, I'm guessing. I don't know. But there's at least 11 books before I could, well I should be able to read this because it's supposed to be like a quick read that you can just pick up but um, yeah I feel like I should need to read those 11 books but and I don't really feel like getting into a series that's that big. 
another one. I have too many series going on, okay? I have too many bloody series going on. Um, the next one is uh, the Double Clue and Other Hercule Poirot Pyro? Pyro stories by Agatha Christie. Oh. <sighs> yeah, it has to go because of the glares. Okay, yeah, no. Um, so I would love to read Agatha Christie books in the future. Um, well, I've been wanting to read them for a while, but I just keep not looking them up. Um, so when I got when I got when I got this one I thought well you know maybe it's a good starting point but then <laughs> because it's like Hercule Poirot stories I feel like I should have read some Hercule Poirot books and novels before you know reading the short story so I'm like no maybe not maybe not so bye this one hurts me a bit because it was so expensive because it is a self-published author so uh, getting a hold of this book was super expensive and I'm not going to charge anyone else. When I sell this book I'm not going to charge anyone else the same price I paid for it because it, it has been... I mean, I haven't read it so it's not like that but it has... I feel like because it's been living with me I am selling it as used, even though it's in perfect condition, and I don't feel like charging how much was it, theoretically speaking? Of course, there's absolutely no price on it because that would be too easy. So I don't want to charge them however many pounds this one cost me. I don't remember. I just remember it was bloody expensive and yeah. And then I didn't end up reading it because stories, I mean, if you know, you know, if you don't, there's really nothing to know. Anyway, so <laughs> it's, it's gonna hurt me a bit. But it's The Last Dawn by J.D. Linton. Because of reasons, I don't feel like reading it. I, it feels bad towards the author and such. I'm sure it's a great book, but yeah, because of reasons, personal reasons, <laughs> I don't wanna. I want nothing to do with this book and it's it feels bad to, towards the author, but there we go. Shit happens. Shit happens. So, this is also another book that I got from the like one pound box. Uh, that implies the box was actually one pound, but no. Um, it came to me like this, and I don't know what's happened, but basically, it has a bit of like, I think it's got a bit of a like water stain something. I don't know if you can tell the riffles here. Um, it's been damaged in some way, and it not because of me. Otherwise, it's like in perfect condition, but um, it's semi water damaged, I guess. Um, anyway, it's Pedigree Mum by Fiona Gibson. I've read one Fiona Gibson book, which was also in that one pound box. I'm gonna call it one pound box because why not? Um, it was a good read, but also because this is water damaged and not because of me, I don't want it. Yeah, that's just me in a nutshell. Maybe another time. Maybe another time. Um, it's bothering me, okay? It's one thing if I damage my own books, but if they come to me damaged, I'm like... <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, so, next up, we have A Surprise Christmas Wedding by Philippa Ashley. Um, I believe this is not even the first in the series and it's not actually a series i'm not too sure it's possible it's like companion novels but it's possible it's like a series i'm not too sure i just know it's like not the first one of the bunch i believe i should be able to read it anyway but yeah if i know there's prior books i want to pick up them first and i'm not reaching for them so it's gonna have to wait <laughs> It's gonna have to wait. Next one, same kind of deal. Possibly a series, possibly companion novel kind of deal. Also not the first one in the bunch. So it is The Cornish Cream Tea Christmas by Cressida McLaughlin. Sounds like a lovely thing, but because of the, the previously stated things, it's, it's not my main goal. So goodbye Christmas, Cornish Christmas cream tea. Sounds like a lovely time. The pile I'm making here is like the Leaning Tower of Pisa right now, and um, let's hope it doesn't fall. All right, so, next book. I have been following this author for a very, very long time. 
first saw off on Twitter, before Instagram was a thing, that's how long I've been following her. So she, um, she used to work for Heath Magazine. I don't know if she, if she does still, but she used to do that and um, wrote reviews and articles and stuff. I don't know what they do. Uh, and then she starts writing books and she her way of writing books is to like go on a travel adventure and then take inspiration for that traveling and uh, traveling travels and write a book and I have one it's my map of you by Isabel Broom <laughs> it's been on my shelf for so long okay <sighs> I do really like her so this feels bad, but also if I can get a couple of pounds for this and go to Yelk, I'm going to be so much more happier, so <laughs> goodbye. Also, <laughs> this is bothering me, but there used to be a sticker right here and it didn't really come off properly. So it's there's like some dirty stick residue here. Um, so yeah, yeah, it bothers me, okay. I am bothered. And then we have A Place to Call Home by Carol Matthews. Been on my shelf for a bit, haven't picked it up, read a bunch of other of her books. So yeah, yeah. I have a couple of more Carol Matthews books coming up. I think they're in the right order, order, order. Um, anyway, next up is Christmas Cakes and Miss Tom Nights by Carol Matthews. Yeah. It hurts me, but also I'm not reaching for them. Um, so I also have It's Now or Never. And I think there is a last one. Where is it? Here it is. Um, a Million Love Songs by Carol Matthews. So I've had all of these for a while. This one, how, this one, by the way, is smaller than the others. So it's, I started off taking this one away because it was smaller and then I realized maybe I should just go with the rest as well uh, anyway so I like her books the ones I've read anyway um it's just that it feels the characters feel like older than what I'm comfortable reading they feel like they're like 50 60s which is not a bad thing they should be a varied size of different types of characters but I don't think they're actually that old I think they've just sort of feels aged up in a way I think they're like in the 30s or something the ones I've read the ones I've read I can't speak for every book um so that's kind of why I'm not like reaching for them I am however keeping her chocolate lovers series her, there's four books in that um which I have started the first one <laughs> I haven't gotten very far um but it's chocolate I'm a chocoholic which is kind of why I have those books in the first place so yeah sad times um and then I have Lipstick Jungle by Candace Bushnell I also have Let's see where it's gone. Uh, one Fifth Avenue by Candice Bushnell. So this one is same kind of deal. I started with this one because it's smaller than the others. Why do they do this? It's very annoying to my brain. I don't think her writing is for me. Um, she is the one that wrote like Sex and the City. Like Lipstick Dungle is also a TV series. Um, but I think Sex and the City is like her fame. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't think her writing is necessarily for me, which is why I haven't picked up the rest of the books and I'm like, hmm, yeah. Maybe when I'm older, maybe that's the thing. Maybe I need to be older and more read before I can take those books in. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, next up we have A Rose Petal Summer by Katie Ford. Also, this one is a smaller size than, you know, normal sized books. I hate it. I hate it. Um, I think I got this free with a magazine sometime. Anyway, I read a uh, quick read novella thingy by Katie Ford. So here's the thing about that quick read. So the premise of it was good. It's just that the execution made me feel like the characters were, well, let's say a bit slow. Where was I? 
bloody camera overheated. Um, Katie Ford. So the quick read was, it was kind of like the character was super, super childish, although she was a fully functional adult. Um, so it, I kind of ruined it a bit. There we go. Um, so I have no idea if it was just because it was quick reads or if it's just Katie Ford's writing. I don't know. Um, maybe in the future I will find out, but it won't be with this physical book I have in my hand. Um, I mean, it could very well be <laughs> the same title. I don't know, but not this copy of it. Then I have She by H. Ryder Haggard. So I believe this is part of the whole, what's it called, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen kind of a deal. Um, so what's that dude's name again? I don't remember. Sean Connery's part, that one, I believe it's not necessarily this book but that character is a part of this series I don't know anyway um I I really like this cover though I think it's very cool but um I've had it for ages not picked it up uh I've also heard it's apparently very problematic um so you know there's that but you know maybe in the future I will look into it but right now I'm gonna say goodbye goodbye to you um, so the next three books I have is actually a series. Um, I believe there are books coming after these three books, but also this is a series that I don't know how to figure out what books are involved or not. Um, so it's the Bourbon Kid series. So one of these books I have read and I did pick it up off my shelf, but I bloody hate the cover. Um, so I was like, well, if I'm getting rid of book two and three, which by the way has covers I do like, um, I, I might as well just get rid of book one because I bloody hate that cover. Yeah. Um, so I'm basically, I'm getting rid of book two and three because I don't want to reread book one. I really don't. And I feel like I have to because I don't remember much of book one. I, me I remember vague details, but not enough to know what the hell is going on. So it's the book with no name. Can you see why I hate this cover? Yes. And also, I ordered this book like three times with a different cover. It was yellow, brown and yellow, matching these more. Um, but this is the one that keep kept getting, getting to me. Uh, I did give away those books a long, long time ago, so I don't have them. But yeah, I bloody hate this cover, okay? Bloody hate it. Squastin. Um, and then we have, I believe this is the correct order, so book two, The Eye of the New Moon. Yeah, I do like these covers. And I believe book number three could be the other way around, but this is The Devil's Graveyard. So they're all by Anonymous. So searching for author Anonymous is not the way to go. <laughs> uh, and finding these books sometimes uh, like finding like the correct information is not the easiest thing in the world. I'm I'm getting rid of them. I'm I'm it's, yeah yeah. Goodbye books. Goodbye. Um, I believe that is all. Okay, I lied. So I went shopping, shopping on my shelves, and decided that you know what? Even though I've read these books, I don't really care for them. So I got a little extra pile. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So, <laughs> I've read all of these books. Do I remember all of these books? No. So, we'll, we'll see. So, the first one I have is a quick read. So, a lot of these books are quick reads, by the way. And, well, I don't really vibe often with the short novellas because, well, it's hard to get a lot in in a short amount of pages and not everybody can do it and yeah it, it just was not for me these books but that, that's fine um maybe they're for someone else who knows so we have beyond the bounty by tony parsons literally just got it because it was a one pound quick read and it was something about um 
a ship. Pirates? I don't know. I didn't really like it. Uh, next up is Happy Families by Adele Parks. Literally don't remember this. Divorced Mum of Three. Um, menopause. Something something. I literally don't remember it. So I can't have loved it. This one I do remember. <laughs> I don't remember all the details of it because I really didn't like this book. And it's a book that most people seem to love and I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyway, it is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. And if you love this book, please tell me why because I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get the book. I don't get why people love it. I found it depressing and boring and a bit shit. Yeah, I said it. I said it. Um, next up is <laughs> one of my one pound box books. Um, it's Kiss Me First by Lottie Mogga. I don't remember this book. What was it? Oh, oh yeah. So basically this girl, Layla, um, she kind of just spends all her time online and then she is pretending to be a different person, a person, what's her name, called Tess. So basically, she's given all this information um, about Tess, um, I, I think from Tess, um, so she can be Tess online, post uh, or on socials and stuff like that. Uh, and basically, um, all of a sudden, <laughs> Layla has this like, what is happening? So she um, goes looking for Tess, where she believes Tess was last seen. Um, because Layla is so into being Tess that at, at some, certain, um, some point, she's like trying to get with, um, I think it's one of the exes, an ex of Tess. And she's having this whole relationship with this man via like socials and uh, texting. Uh, and then she like meets him in real life and she's like, but you know me. And he he doesn't know her because <laughs> it's not her. Um, yeah, it was just weird. It was scary in a way, all with the whole the... Uh, with the whole just living, you can be literally anyone online thing. Oh yeah, I, I didn't really like, whoa, I didn't really like it. Um, so, it can go. This next one. So, at the time it came out, hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look when it came out. Um, it was, uh, 2004, yeah. So, around that time, <laughs> So around the time, 2004, a couple of years later, I think, um, this book was everywhere. This was like pre-Instagram world time. So this was Twitter era when Twitter had its heyday. It's not even called Twitter anymore. So, I mean, there's that. Um, like everybody was reading it. Everybody was saying how good it was and all that. So I was like, well... I like to read. I should read a book that everybody likes, right? Um, so I picked it up. First off, it's Chunky Boy. Um, second off, um, yeah, it's Cool Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. Now, I did not get this book at all. Um, so it's written in... I want to say like letters and diary entries kind of a way, which is fine, but it's also set like different time periods <laughs> with different characters and I, I could not keep track of anything. I don't know who was who, what was what and none of it. And then whenever it was there was a movie <laughs> with loads of big big name actors. So the movie I did not understand it anymore. So either I'm extremely stupid which I may be a little stupid, but I don't think I'm extremely stupid, okay? I do have some some brains in there, but I didn't get it. I didn't get it anymore. It didn't explain anything. I have no idea what the hell it's about. Uh, the only thing that kept me watching the whole movie was 
because it's like different timelines and the actors are playing different people in the different timelines and sometimes they don't actually look like themselves so what I amused myself with during that movie was figuring out which actor was what character if you can actually like literally see well that's Tom Hanks that's Halle Berry that's Hugh Grant are those the people that are in the movie? I don't remember. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't get it. I think the cover is quite fun though. Um, but no, someone explain it to me, please. Okay, another one pounder book. I, I need to stop saying that, but it's The Frozen Woman by John Michelet. So basically it's a thriller book and this body this frozen body is found um in a backyard or something yeah in the garden of a notorious left-wing lawyer because why not um it's set in norway somewhere i don't remember i think it says anyway so it's a whole mystery kind of a deal apparently it's so it's a series but this I think is the only book of the series that is actually translated to English. All the other ones are in Norway. <laughs> They're in Norwegian. And uh, I would argue that you could very easily read this book without having read the other books, because it's not the first one, by the way. Um, so in that sense, yes. But also when it's a series, I didn't find out that it was a translated series until after I read it, by the way. So, but when it's a series, I kind of want to read everything. And I don't want to read everything with this because it, it wasn't that. It was fine, but it wasn't great. So I don't care about the other books, about this, whatever his name was, Wilhelm. Moving on to more quick reads books, we have The Escape by Lydia Laplante, Laplante, I don't know, um, I don't remember what this one was about, um, I'm guessing some kind of mystery thriller thing because of the other books uh, this person has written, uh, kind of looks thriller murder-ish, um, something about prison, burglary, I don't know, I don't care. Um, next one is Wrong Time, Wrong Place by Simon Koenig. Um, Scottish Highlands hiking. Come across a girl. She is half... You are hiking in the Scottish Highlands with three friends when you come across a girl. She is half naked, has been badly beaten, and she can't speak English. She is clearly running away from someone. Do you stop to help her, even if it means putting your friend's life and your own in terrible danger? I think this was one they kind of ended up in a cabin... And she was like, I can't go with you, but they didn't understand. I don't know. I didn't I didn't really vibe with them. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I love how I'm just like, I didn't like it, so moving on. <laughs> uh, next one is Six Foot Six by Kit the Wall. All I remember is it was a really tall man. And something I wanna say oranges. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know. A really tall man. Um, maybe not all there. Terrible explanation. I don't know. Uh, the Other Side of You by Amanda Craig. Can he live without being a thief? Oh, okay. I kind of like these covers of uh, her other books. <laughs> They're just simple. Simple but colourful. I like it. Uh, hungry and afraid, branded house, different parts of the city, blah 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 blah. Paul must run or die. He's seen a murder and the gang on his estate is after him. I honestly don't remember it. I do really like the cover though. It's quite cool. But, yeah. I remember... Okay, so I, I have to say, I don't remember most of these quick reads books. Um, but I do remember not liking them. If I remember them... I have liked them. <laughs> Next up is a Clean Break by Tammy Cohen. Something about her husband. What's a clean break from husbands? Can still be friends. She just doesn't want to stay married to him. But Jeff doesn't want a friend. He wants a wife. He wants Kate. And he will do anything to keep her. Jack remembers his wedding wow to del till death do his part. He always keeps a promise. I mean that I, I mean that is kind of intriguing, but 
I don't remember it, so I probably didn't like it. Next up is Hidden by Barbara Taylor Bradford. Same kind of deal. I think this is more, I want to say Bridgerton vibes, um, but I'm not sure it's like that era. But it's because I'm seeing the covers of the other books. Why with all the glass? Yeah, those are kind of like Bridgerton vibes to me. <laughs> I'm gonna lie. Anyway, uh, she can run, but she, can she hide? I don't know. <sighs> Red for Revenge by Fanny Blake. It was something about two women, um, they met in like a nail salon or something. I think it was a nail salon because of the, the cover. And they discovered they had more in common than they thought, like not just their nails. Um, it was something that. Maggie is married with two grown up children. Carla is widowed. Oh yeah, they're sharing the same man. Shocker! That was the last of the quick reads books. Um, so next up is The Flip Side by James Bailey. Now this was just weird, because <laughs> this this dude, he, he decides to like live his life by the flip of a coin. So the flip of a coin decides what he's gonna do. Like, is he gonna have spaghetti for dinner? Heads means yes, tails means no. Stuff like that. It's the weirdest thing, and he does it for everything. And then he does it with this girl he meets. <laughs> and it's like, no, you've got to stop now. <laughs> this is, this is, this is, this is, oh. It was cute, but also, <laughs> yeah, no. Last one. This one was highly, highly depressing. This is We Own the Sky by Luke Allnut. So I don't remember if it was the mum or the dad. I'm gonna assume it was the dad because I think it's set from like the dad's point of view. Anyway, so we have a mum, we have a dad. Um, so they've had trouble conceiving but then they finally do get a baby and the baby turns out to be sick and then they sort of go through this whole we need to do anything we can to save this child um including going to <laughs> third world countries and doing experimental treatments to possibly like a 1% chance of saving the child's life instead of, you know, treasuring the time they actually have and not putting the child into pain in any way, shape or form. Um, so one of the parents, they kind of goes against the other one's wishes and takes the child away out of the country to do this treatment and such and the other one finds out and is like it's an incredibly depressing story from like start to end well it, it it doesn't end well for anyone for anyone and i'm not just talking about death and stuff but it's just yeah now i think i'm done now so back to me wherever i left you <laughs> i have a confession to make my dudes, I lied to you. As I was filling in the gaps, moving the books and filling in the gaps on my bookshelves, I found more books I could get rid of. This is the most chaotic unhauling video ever. This is probably why I should never do unhauling videos. Um, but here we go. So let me just tell you quickly about the books I found that could just not live with me anymore. <laughs> so the first one is Empress of Forever by Max Gladstone. This was a book that I did not see <laughs> any point of whatsoever. So this girl, what, what was her name? Vivian. She was like a inventor in, she was like brilliant, successful innovator uh, on the scale of Steve Jobs. Basically she was brilliant but then it starts with uh, the book starts with her being on the run and then all of a sudden she's like in a different world and she's potentially the queen well empress it just made no sense <laughs> thankfully this was a standalone but also 
I don't know what it, I, I don't know, I don't know. So, it can go. Uh, next one is Those Who Lie by Diane Jeffrey. This was something, so basically this woman has memory loss and uh, her husband died and she starts like piecing together the evidence of things turning up around her and she may not be as guilty or not guilty of things that she sees that she seems that she thinks she is or other things other people says she is it was an interesting ish book would i ever want to pick it up again <laughs> no um so by far probably one of the better books of the bunch i i read um that i didn't like but also i don't I know was up for me. Um, I found another quick reads book. Uh, so, Out of the Dark by Adele Jaras. This was war stuff. Me no do war. Cool, cool. Um, <laughs> this book was so weird. And there were like the weirdest sex scenes. I don't even want a picture, but they made me picture it in this book. I don't even know what it's about because it kept jumping about and it, it made less sense than I do and that's saying something um and it's Heartland by Anna Simo now the premise for this was actually kind of cool but it didn't work out okay <laughs> and the very last one um is from what I gather a very popular author within their genre or this genre the mystery thriller um genre <laughs> but it just was not for me um and it's caught by harlan coven and this is the last book <laughs> i should probably do like because i have no idea uh, on the off the top of my head i should do like the editing me should calculate all the books and put the number up here because i feel like it's a lot of books <laughs> I feel like it's so many books. I mean, they're all back there. I've put them in little like plastic bags to not get them dirty. Okay, now we're done. So, you know, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Please let me know that I've done the right decision, that I've made the right decision here. And um, wish me luck in getting, you know, a couple of pounds i'm not charging overcharging i'm more or less undercharging it's all of them are between like one and three pounds that's the amount i'll be getting for them um if i get anything uh, so, so there's that my calculations based on these prices are that i need to sell like 200 books to even get to my goal so you do that math <laughs> Anyway, wish me luck um, on selling things so that I can get to Yelp. Pretty please? <laughs> Alright, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care. Up a boy.